Hey everybody, it's Boltar here, and today we're going to be discussing the Wii as well as this brand new HDMI lossless internal video modification coming out by Electron Shepard. Now this is going to be a full tutorial teaching you how to break this system down, the anatomy of the Wii, good technique for installing this. It's just give me a few minutes, we're getting there. But before we really dive in, I want to talk about this little black box right here. Now it's not a review and I'm not going to discuss the features, but in case you didn't know, this is a RetroTINK 4K prototype. And I've had it for my in my possession for the past couple of months. Mike Chi, the creator, who's a pretty good friend of mine, sent it to me so I could evaluate it, help him debug a few things, just help him along the way. I send him stuff. He helps me a lot more than I help him, but I'm always very gracious when he asks me to do things like this. The point is, this is just my personal opinion, and forgive me if I rant for just a minute. It's just my opinion. I see a paradigm shift in the landscape of video and audio mods for all of these what we would call legacy systems. All of the digital video mod kits that are currently available for the most part are fantastic. For example, Citrus 3000 PSI, Dan Kuntz, has made some of the best digital video hardware mods of them all. It's top tier. All of these kits are great. I just want to preface this again by saying all of these kits are phenomenal but they all share a common denominator. Most of these kits today are quite expensive and they are feature rich for today. Now, what does that mean? 1080p output, 1440p output, those are pretty much the de facto standard for these high tiered kits. But, but, what happens in a couple of years when 4K becomes more prevalent or maybe even, God forbid, 8K these kits that we're spending a lot of money on are going to hit a performance ceiling and they're not going to have the resources or facilities to be updated. The kits are limited to the hardware that they're predicated upon. In my opinion, in the future, right now, cheap, by the way, this is very inexpensive, cheaper, lower cost, you could consider them lower entry digital modifications are the way to go inexpensive kits that more or less provide a digital HDMI conforming video signal that can be intercepted losslessly by video processors such as this can do more and have more flexibility than any internal modification ever made. Why? This is updatable. This can be replaced. This can be upgraded. As long as you can output a digital audio and video source that's signal conforming to a standard this cheap kit is never going to be out of date. So please, in the future, I'm just asking everybody to consider what analog component and analog RGB have done for us over the past decade and a half. We have piped those high bandwidth signals that are cheap and inexpensive to produce and to manufacture into more expensive, powerful external video processors to be upsampled and shaped in any way that we see fit. So cheaper kits that are less feature rich, I just want to see given a fair shake because as far as I'm concerned, kits like this are the future. Today, we're going to be installing this bad boy. If you have intermediate skills or if you're just kind of new but you you've kind of know your way around an iron, this won't be too bad if you follow my tutorial here and if you've seen my other content. Now please go through look look through my library of prior videos where we install a lot of various kits. I think that you can do this if you just commit yourself and if you just be patient. Now we're going to be installing this and we're going to be taking apart this Wii as I said earlier. Taking apart the Wii and disassembling it is really the struggle and the challenge here. There are a lot of screws and there are a lot of parts here that we have to keep reconciled so they don't get lost. Typically when you take something apart, at least for me the first time, I always end up with more screws in my hand after taking it apart than, than I ever thought I ever took out of it in the first place. So let's try to avoid that. So at any rate, this kit is phenomenal. Now when I say phenomenal, I mean the price to performance is staggering. Now I'm going to put a picture up here. This is what it's selling for currently. 
It's pretty, pretty remarkable. And I think that this kit is probably the easiest of any Wii digital solution that's been available in the past. Now, make no mistake, this is the, the Wii Duel by Citrus 3000. Phenomenal kit, phenomenal hardware. The only problem with it is you can't buy it anymore. And understandably, these chips are getting harder to source and it just might not be financially viable. You can't fault them for that. Having said that, these are here, these are plentiful, and they're excellent. So I'm going to show you how to install this. We're going to have a good time. I'm also going to have a link that will give me just a little bit of of a few cents here and there if you use it. Now, I would really appreciate it if you decide to buy this. Check out the link down below and grab it. You don't have to use my link. You can go right to the manufacturer, Electron Shepherd's website, and you can do it yourself. But I just want you to know, I really appreciate everyone's support, especially over this past year. Some of you know it's been a really hard one for me, and I kind of went dark for a little bit, trying to get my health and trying to get other things straightened out. I'm much better now. I'm back in tip-top shape. I'm ready to help you guys some more. So a lot of people, especially in the modding community who want to offer services to install this, have asked me to sort of go through it so that they have a good resource and they have a good reference. That's exactly what we're going to do here. So it's going to be slow and it's going to be thorough. At any rate, guys, I hope you enjoy this. Thanks for having me back. Sit back, strap on, and let's do it. Now today, we're going to be installing Electron Shepard's AVE HDMI. Let me just take this out of the packaging. And we have a few items here. First, our flex cable, our FFC cable, very simple. We have our HDMI interposer here that will attach to the USB ports on the motherboard of the Wii. This little board right here is an IR receiver and sensor that will allow you to adapt and learn a universal remote in the event that you don't have a Wii that has GameCube controller ports. So if you need to access the GC video menu and you don't have these ports, you can easily use a remote that you can program to get into that menu. Because our GameCube has GameCube ports, I'm not going to be including this, but this is fantastic of Electron Shepard to include as an option for those systems that don't have GameCube controller functionality. So we're going to put this over here to the side and we're going to get right into the meat and potatoes. Now this is the kit. It's this simple. This will work on launch model Wii's, six layer boards, as well as newer revisions such as this, which I believe this is a CPU 40 revision, four layer. Um, these systems run much cooler and are much more power efficient and they're just a little more durable. Having said that, this is the first kit, to my knowledge, and please correct me if I'm wrong, that is compatible with a wide spectrum of Wii hardware, with the exception of the new-ish Wii Mini um, system, the cut-down version of the Wii. So having said that, this is the kit. Now on the topic of disassembly, there are only two tools that you're going to need to use. Two tools. We have a tri-wing bit screwdriver here, and we also have a Phillips bit screwdriver right here. These are the only two tools necessary to fully and thoroughly disassemble this system. Now, on the topic of disassembly, the Wii is notoriously known for its difficulty in disassembling. More often than not, if you're not used to taking this apart, you're going to find that you have more screws in the end than you had in the beginning left over. This case, it's pretty beaten up. You can see it's cracked and splintered. Another fun thing that we're going to do is we're going to install a new Wii custom console case. Now you can get these from the internet, eBay, AliExpress. This is a nice smoked clear case, I believe. It's going to look fantastic and it's going to show off our mod work. Really, this, this Wii has a great optical drive, but it's been battered and beaten and abused through its life. Let's refurb this system. Let's give it a new lease. Okay, disassembly begins right now. Stick with me, and I'm going to get you through this. Let's do it. Now, the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to remove all of the feet and the screw stoppers, or the screw concealers, that must be removed. Now, there are several here, and this is what I see more often than not. When people are removing these, they're often irreversibly damaging them. I'm going to show you just a couple of simple techniques that might take a little time, but if you do them, your chances of removing these unscathed 
go up exponentially, and I really recommend it. It's just how I do it. Now, we have a nice tight shot of this. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to take an X-Acto knife. This one's rather dull, and in my experience, the duller, the better. I'm going to just put this in position where the plastic rubber meet. The plastic and the rubber meet. I'm not jamming this in here. I'm not forcing it. I'm just gently laying it into place like this. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hot air rework station and I'm going to set the heat to around 100 degrees Celsius and I'm just going to heat this part for about 10 or 15 seconds. That's going to loosen the adhesive and allow me to preserve these feet because I like the OEM ones better and I want to keep them intact. Watch carefully. Okay, that should be plenty of heat, and with just a little effort and a very gentle prizing, we should be able to come right in here and liberate it just like that with just a little bit of adhesive left here. Not a big deal. That's pretty good. Okay, I'm going to repeat this for all the remaining little rubber feet. I'm not going to show this every time because I don't think it's very important. I think you get the idea nonetheless. A little hot air goes a long way at liberating these and keeping them intact. Okay, great work. We've removed all of the necessary little adhesive pads and rubber feet. These two are removed. These two on all we revisions stay in place. These little stickers here, of course, are removed and these pads here are removed. These can stay in place if you don't intend on transferring these over or if you just intend on using your existing case. That's all you have to do. Now we're going to start zipping some of these screws out. As you can see, some of these are Tri-Wing and some of these are Phillips. Let's get started on that. Let's just start zipping these out. Very good. We've removed all four screws that hold the front face in. One, two, three, and four. Very carefully, let's just gently rock the front face with some nice, easy finesse, just like this, and be mindful of this little power ribbon cable here. The interconnect disconnects without any sort of tension there. You just pull it out. Okay, very good. At this point, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna zip out the Phillips bits or the Phillips screws that hold on the GameCube uh, controller port and memory card bezel. Very simple. Let's zip these two babies out. Now, after removing these two screws, this face bezel will literally pop right out, which will reveal additional screws that tie these case halvings together. So let's go ahead and zip out these two Phillips screws and we'll zip out these two tri-wing screws and we'll flip the unit around and we'll take care of these remaining screws, including one hidden here in the coin cell door holder. So let's go ahead and let's get it done. Now, before finishing this side, I'm going to go ahead and pop out the coin cell door with a Phillips bit. Mind you, this does not back out all the way. This just loosens so that we may decouple it from the side, just like so. We have a tri-wing screw right here, hidden. Let's go ahead and finish this off. Fantastic work. Okay, only two screws remain. These are tri-wing and they're hidden right here, embedded in the back of the case. Once we remove these two, we can split this apart and we can start truly disassembling. Let's get them out. Now with these two final screws, we are totally done with the tri-wing screwdriver, of course, until we reassemble the system. So having said that, this system is ready to be split apart. Now there's some dust in here. I noticed that when we looked at the uh, air intake right here. This system has some gunk in it. It might be a little bit of a nuisance to split apart. There might be some gunk in here kind of holding it together. So what you really want to do is you just want to take your time, grab it in an area. You can clearly see the separation of the cases following down the lines here. Just be really careful. Take a corner. Just take a corner and gently 
gently prize out just like that. Once you have a corner started, it's really easy just to lift up and liberate just like that. Okay, the cases are apart. The only thing remaining here is we'll take off this RF plating. We'll set this to the side. And with that removed, we have exposed the optical drive, the heat sink, and everything else. Now the next step is just to take our Phillips bit, and we have four, one, two, three, four Phillips screws to remove to take this optical drive out. Now I'm going to take these out, but before I lift the drive out, pay very close attention because I have some important notes here that may help you and may actually keep you from ruining your system. Let's do it. Now pay attention to this. Before we lift out this drive, keep in mind here and here underneath are two different interconnects. One is a flex FFC and the other is just a uh, cable interconnect that we have to be very care careful with. Let's not rip anything and let's just make sure that we decouple these before we put too much tension on them and rip them out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the drive with my left hand and I'm just going to lift up just like this. Now you can see them right here. I'm going to lift up about another two inches. Okay, and I'm going to lift down and we've split these apart. Now in order to remove these, it's just a matter of taking this one, pulling it back. I'm going to zoom in here to show you the little drawer that we lift up that removes, relieves the tension. We pull it out. Watch carefully. Now you see the brown flap here. It's very simple. It's just a matter of taking a fingernail, gently, gently, gently prizing this up and removing the FFC. Now we have safely removed our optical drive. We're now ready to fully disassemble our Wii. Let me put this to the side real quick and we're gonna talk about this. Now if you look very carefully, stamped in the RF plating, we have arrows, we have X's, and we have squares. Now I wanna to explain to you what some of these mean because it can be really complicated if you don't understand and if you don't even pay attention to this to keep inventory and to catalog all of these different screws that live in here because there are a ton. Arrows indicate silver screws. Wherever there's an arrow, there's going to be a silver screw. And there's only two sizes. One size is the smallest size, which is what you'll find in all the arrows. And the other size is right over here. And it's got this little triangle and it's just the longer screw. It's this one right here. It's the same thread type. It's just a little bit longer. So having said that, silver screws, arrows, this little screw is the longer of all the silver screws. Um, we have two of them right here. Uh, the black screws are designated by X's. The black screws are designated by X's. So whenever you're reassembling this, and if you want to know where um, a uh, you know black screw goes, it's only where you see an X. And a lot of these obviously you can't see because they're hidden. Uh, but ultimately, black screws are X's. It's that simple. Um, squares are also silver screws. It's the same size as these. I think squares um, denote when metal, like this metal, bonds to a piece of metal underneath it. So they're not dissimilar, I suppose. At any rate, we have one here, silver screws. So again, triangles, arrows, squares, silver screws. X's, nothing but black screws. Having said that, let's start the disassembly process. Now I'm going to start um, you can start anywhere. I'm going to start right up here and I'm going to take off the uh, ducting work for the fan and I'm going to work my way forwards. Let's do it. Now we've removed all of the black screws that are coupling this duct work as well as this plastic assembly here. We can now move these off. Now my antenna, I'm just going to be very careful with it. I'm going to route it over here and just sort of get it out of the way just like this. And I'm going to very carefully lift this up just like so and remove this ductwork. Okay, very simple. I'm just going to move this out of the way for now. Okay, perfect. Let's go ahead and remove this black piece here just like this. 
Now, this is just a personal preference of mine, but if you want to, you can go ahead and you can remove these antennae just to make it a little bit easier for you if it does, in fact. I like to keep these intact, so I just move them to the right, and now we have all of these other screws now exposed. I can continue zipping these out, and we can get closer to removing the main board and this RF plating from the bottom shell of the, of the Wii. So let's just keep going. Now we have removed all of the exposed screws, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to first start with this little bracket right over here, and it just lifts off very carefully, pull it out, okay, I'm going to put this to the side, and over here with my antenna we have another little bracket, very careful, let's remove that, and then what's remaining is this little black piece here, and when we remove this it's going to reveal just a few more silver screws that we're going to have to remove. Now this black plastic piece that we removed, it also has this little nut right here, and this little nut is very, very, very easy to misplace or lose. It's just held in by a little tension. Now without this nut, we can't screw and anchor our coin uh, cell door back into the system, so make sure you don't lose this. Okay, let's keep going. Now every screw is removed. We are ready to take off this top RF plating, this can also be a little tricky, so let me show you what I like to do, what makes it easy for me. I come in here to the side where the GameCube controller ports are, and I'm not tearing this out, I'm not ripping hard, I'm just very gently loosening, just like this, and rocking just a little bit, just a little bit. I go around all the corners to kind of get this ready to go, just like this. All the corners here, don't grab the heat sink, never grab the heat sink, always grab the RF plating like so. Go around the corners and just very carefully lift just like so. Now when we do this, we have all the corners articulated a little bit to where they move. What we can do is I like to grab one corner and I like to go to the other end and grab another corner. And I like to just lift like so. And very carefully, don't let these get scraped up by these cutouts in the metal very carefully feed through your ribbon cables like so. We've liberated this. There's going to be some adhesive here for the module. Let's not interrupt it and let's not disturb it. Keep it here. We'll move this to the side. And now we have fully exposed our main board. Now our antenna here, like I said, you can remove them. I like to keep them intact. All I'm going to do is take our module here and very carefully rock it off just like this. This assembly I'm going to move to the side. And the only thing keeping this main board affixed to the shell are four screws that bond the heat sink to the CPU and GPU and that bond all of this assembly to this bottom case. So let's just zip these out and we'll very carefully be able to remove this main board. And finally, <laughs> we can install this modification and talk about it. Let's zip them out. Now we're ready to remove the main board, but before we do, I like to go ahead and remove the heat sink, but let me talk about that for just a second. The heat sink does have thermal compound, and most of the time, it's reserviceable. So if you just very careful, lift it straight up, the thermal pads are gonna be intact, and if they come off just a bit, that's no problem. Just take a finger on one of the corners and just sort of move it back in position. There is nothing wrong with this thermal material, it's perfectly capable of being reused and staying in service. The only thing we have to do now is pick this bad boy up and the motherboard is totally free. Okay, it's mod time. Great work. Now the motherboard is totally free. All of the soldering is going to be happening on the bottom side of the board. We have our little DAC here, and for the most part, all of the soldering will be happening right in this area, but ultimately, the hard part as far as I'm concerned is over. Let's put this board to the side, and let's talk about the kits. Now, this kit, since shooting this video, has been updated. I was working with Electron Shepard on a couple of things, and we've made some changes here that's going to make this even better more consistent and easier. Now this is the old kit, 
you won't be dealing with this, you'll be dealing with this. And we're going to zoom in just a bit to talk about it. Now in my hands is the AVE HDMI. Now once again, this is the kit by Electron Shepard. This kit is very simple to install. There are only a couple things that you really need to know. And mainly, it's just about this area right here. Now we have two sets of vias. One set is for a specific set or revision of Wii, and the other is for a different set or a different specific uh, revision of the Wii. CPU 40 and up, meaning all newer revisions, are going to use the vias that are below this white reference designating line right here. That's what we're going to be using. Now, if you have an older launch model Wii, for example, six layer boards, they're a lot heavier on heat and they have a lot more energy output. Nonetheless, it's perfectly compatible and you're going to be using these top vias right here. Now, if you're using this in a newer Wii that's going to be using these vias below the line, don't cut along this white line. Now, that's what I did on the prototypes and that was actually part of the procedure. But the problem is it seems that people might be cutting a little too close and they might not be cutting accurately on this line and so therefore they could run the risk of damaging the interposer which is just a flex cable. So I highly encourage you not to cut this. Just take some Kapton tape and mask off these top vias so that they're well insulated. Okay, let's zoom in on the board and let's talk about where specifically this is going to install. Let's do it. Now once again, we are looking at the bottom of our Wii main board. We're going to come right into here where this little IC is and we're just going to zoom in nice and tight. Now that's quite good. So all of the soldering is really going to be happening right here on these vias. And if I just grab this kit, I'll show you very simply that the vias are to align just like so. So what we're going to do is we're going to zoom in tight on this and I'm going to show you how to prep this area so that you can get excellent results and we can make sure that we have proper alignment and that we do everything that we need to do. But first, let's just take a little Kapton tape and let's just uh, insulate this so that this is not a problem. I don't want to cut this. We're just going to insulate it. Okay, great job. Both top and bottom layers are insulated. We're ready to keep going. Now we're zoomed in nice and tight here and what we want to do is we want to pre-tin these vias. Now I'm going to do that by just putting my solder right here over them. I'm going to take my tip and I'm going to introduce it just like so and I'm just going to begin, it might look a little messy, but I'm just going to begin by flooding some fresh solder into these points just like so. And if you're having trouble with your solder, if your solder is a little oxidized or if this board has seen better days, let me show you another trick come in here with a little bit of no clean flux and let me clean my tip off real quick so we can start off fresh. Give me just one second here. Come right in here with your tip. Watch me apply fresh T1000 juices just like that. Beautiful. And that might have dried a little bit so we'll apply a little bit more flux. Not a big deal. And we're going to come right in here and we're just going to apply fresh liquid T1000 juices to all of the vias in the area. Now this just takes a few seconds. It's prep work though that is necessary because you want to make sure that you have good, excellent wetting and you want to make sure that these vias have some material. Now you'll see that some of these vias might not be taking material and that is exactly why we are doing this. I am looking for the vias that are resistant to wetting with fresh solder. And the reason I'm doing that is because I might have to remove some conformal coating. Now, I don't like to do this unless unless I absolutely have to, but as you can as you can clearly see, I have ran this soldering tip quite thoroughly over these vias and we're still having some trouble. So, let me show you a couple of tricks. The first trick, if you're very very careful, a exacto knife, an exacto knife is a perfect tool for just removing just a bit of that conformal coating. Now watch very carefully. I'm going to come in here just like this and with just a little bit of ease, I'm not putting any pressure, I am just gliding this tip over this via because we have some conformal coating and we have some solder resist that's been tinted and pulled over and the solder mask is just keeping us from properly wetting and getting a good solder contact. So I'm just coming in here very carefully 
and I'm just going to try to clean these up to the best of my ability. You can see that the, the tinting is coming off and we are removing that conformal coating, being very careful. Once again, we are not putting any force down. We are not pushing down, bearing down on the main board whatsoever. It's just a matter, I'm not even sure if we need to do this via, but we'll do it anyways, but it's just a matter, this is a ground, it's just a matter of coming in here very carefully and removing that conformal coating. Now, I'm not quite done here. There are a few more here that we need to, we need to pay some attention to right here especially. Let's just come in here and just be very gentle. Very, 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 very gentle. Good. This via here looks like it needs some help. We'll come in here nice and easy. Small, precise circles. That's what we're looking for. Great. These look okay. This up here had some trouble. It looks like getting some material going. So we're going to come in here. Do some very light circles. Once again, we're being very gentle. And of course, you could use something such as a fiberglass pen, but the problem is, if you're not very skilled and if you've not done a lot of these, you run the risk of removing more material than you really want to when using a when you when using a um, fiberglass pencil. You don't want to remove, in other words, if you see these traces here that I'm following, you really don't want to remove solder resist from those. You want to keep those protected from oxidation. The more protection they have, the less likely they are to oxidize and corrode in the future. But if you do that, it's not the end of the world. Okay, now we've just, we've done a little cleanup here. I'm going over these it's best to go ahead like I did initially and just try running your solder over it. That will tell you what needs work and really what, what doesn't need work. It'll keep you from spending all afternoon clearing out solder resist. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to apply a little bit more flux and we're going to try this again to see if we made any difference. Let me just straighten our board up here. Okay, that looks quite good and we're going to come right in here. Once again, I'm going to take, oops, you take a tip clean it off just a bit here and I want, to, I want you to watch fresh solder is going to be deposited just like that the solder juices are flowing and we're going to glide this once more over our vias and as you can see we're doing a lot better here now that looks quite nice I'm seeing some nice silver tinting and things are starting to look much better here I'm just going to make some small circular motions the tip in position like this and we're looking pretty good I would say let me clean off my tip here and take a look at what we have okay we're looking pretty good here just a few little a few more little uh, vias here I just want to make sure I'm making good contact let me come in here great fantastic okay I'm going to clean this up Check it out again. Get some IPA in here. Let's wash this off. Now that's a tremendous difference. It looks like we have only one V here that needs just a little bit of work right here. Not a problem. I'm going to come in here and be very careful. Very careful. I'm just going to come right in here. And I'm just going to remove very gently some more of that solder resist right in here. Small circular motions. And you'll know when you've done it when you see the uh, via, the annular ring, get a little shinier. That's kind of an indicator that, yes, we've removed some material. Now we're going to come right in here. Whoops, we're a little bit out of focus. Let me try to, let me try to get that dialed in a little better. Ooh, that's better. Okay, now we're going to come right in here. And I'm going to try this once more just to see I'm gonna make one final pass here I think we're gonna be okay just a little bit of flux there take our tip and let's just dig in a little bit and make sure we get a nice wetting flowing action across these vias Okay, that looks a little murky. Let's clean that up. Good. 
And that is exactly what we're looking for. Okay, all these vias look great. The prep work is done. Let's lay our interposer over this, line up the vias, and solder it into place. Now, just like we practiced before, we're going to lay our interposer over, and we're just going to line this up until we see right underneath that we have all of these vias lined up. And you'll know when you have it lined up because you'll see the material come through those little plated through holes just like that. It's very simple. Now we have pretty good alignment here. As you can see, we see, we see silver all the way across, even up at the top. We're looking fantastic. Now I'm just going to do a little finagling here. I'm going to make sure we've got good alignment all the way across. That, whoops, that looks pretty good. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold this with a finger and I'm going to take a little bit of no clean. And I'm going to see if I can't just spot a couple of these vias in position so I can free up both hands. Now it's very simple. I've already got a little solder left on my tip here. As you can see, we've got a little bit of solder left here. I'm just going to come in like this and I'm going to make contact just like that. Now I can let this go. My hands are free. Now with both hands free, if I need to, I probably have a couple of degrees of rotation as you can see me wiggling this. Fantastic. I'm just going to come up here Make sure we've got good alignment. Alignment looks great. I'm seeing silver across the board. Everything here looks exceptional, guys. I'm proud of you. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to hold this tight just like this. And I want to come in here and I'm going to take this corner right in here. And I'm going to lock it in. Now we're pretty well logged in now. As you can tell, we've got pretty much everything in perfect alignment still. This is the part where I get a little foot loose and fancy free. <laughs> and I'm going to take some solder here and I'm going to take some flux and I'm going to be very generous, generous with this and I'm going to take my iron and I am just going to spot this in with by wetting and rolling solder in position like this. I want to get a nice ball go going and watch this. We're just going to reflow into those vias that we prepped. Again, that's why we did all of that prep work. And as you can see, we're looking great. We're looking beautiful sensual. Now there's a nice ugly ball there of solder and the solder doesn't look super clean right now. That's quite all right. We're going to come right in here with some flux and this is where I'm going to start cleaning it up. I'm going to start cleaning it up by introducing that solder, introducing just a little bit more in there so we have some thermal mass moving around and these balls are going to start looking pretty clean in about two seconds. Now that's looking quite nice. We'll clean this up and we'll review our work to make sure we have thorough wetting and that we have no stray little solder whiskers. Not a problem. Now we're looking pretty good here. A little spritz of alcohol. Let's clean this up and let's see what we're working with. Now these vias look great. Excellent wetting. We've got perfect penetration. This is all set and ready to go. Great job. But guys, please keep in mind that prep work in the beginning, that is paramount. Pre-tin these vias, make sure they're wetting first before you overlay this and solder it in, otherwise you're going to have trouble. Okay, let's keep going. Now we've zoomed out here just a bit and let's just overlook everything that we have so far. We've got great placement here. Our wetting, once again, looks fantastic. It doesn't get any cleaner than this. The only things remaining are our 3 volt ground GameCube controller as well as a 5 volt supply. These four connections have to be wired with individual conductors. That's not a big deal. And then we're going to move right up in here because this is where we'll be installing the HDMI port. It lives in here just like this. So let's go ahead and let's get these conductors ready to go and let's put these in place so we can get this all buttoned up. Let's do it. Now the 5 volt supply is super simple to find. We're just going to come right down here and as you can see we have a nice little test pad right here. That's exactly where we're going to pull our 5 volt supply from. So let's go ahead and tin this up and let's solder this in. Now this GCD pin is actually for our GameCube controller so we can use that to access the GC video menu and if you come all the way up here, way, 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 way up here, you'll see right here TP27, this point right 
here is what's responsible for allowing us to use the GameCube controller in port 1 to access that menu. So let's pretend this test pad and let's make the connection. Now I want to make my return or ground as short as possible. So right here in the bottom of the ceramic cap, this is where I'm going to affix ground and all I'm going to do is just pretend this. And join my conductor there. Now the final conductor that we have to solder for the AVE HDMI is the 3 volt supply and we're going to grab that right over here to the left on our AV output port. Now if we start counting here in the bottom left hand corner, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, pins 5 and 6, one is the 3 volt supply and the other is the mode select. Now this is why this is very important. We want to bridge pins 5 and 6 together because if we don't, this mode select pin will not be tied to a high logic state and in other words, it will not allow us to select resolutions beyond 480i. So in other words, in order to unlock 480p, we've just got to bridge pins 5 and 6 so that this pin goes high and that the Wii thinks that there's a component cable installed. I hope that makes sense. So at any rate, let's bridge these two connections and then we'll just carry a conductor all the way from the three volt pad to the AV out. Let's go for it. Everyone, pat yourselves on the back. This looks fantastic. Okay, all of our conductors are soldered properly, and our GameCube controller line here is being anchored by this um, FFC interconnect, and it just holds it in place, and it's just bound here by uh, the actual connector itself. This looks great. Now, there's only one thing left to do in terms of soldering, and that revolves all around our USB ports right here. We're going to take the small interposer that's got a mini HDMI and we're going to fix it over the USB ports and this is what we're going to use. So let's get this lined up and let's get this installed. Now this next part is very simple. We're just going to put our HDMI interposer over the pins here of our uh, USB port and we're going to make sure this is aligned. Now this is the way I like to do this. People might have a different way. This is just what works well for me. Now notice Obviously, there is some significant play here. We want to make sure that this port is, to the best of our ability, square with the outline of our PCB. That way, our case, when we make our HDMI port, this port will be projected perfectly plumb and straight, and in other words, it won't be skewed or cockeyed. So here's what I like to do. I'm just going to take the edge of this PCB right here of our HDMI interposer, and I'm going to make sure that we have an even width of line here with our white reference designator here that's for the uh, provision for the USB port. So in other words, we're just going to put this in position and we're going to make sure that the white reveal here is the same here as it is right here. In other words, we can clearly look at this and see that we have a thicker white line here on the interior as we do on the exterior. Obviously, we can look at this and, and tell that this port is way out of plumb. So we're just going to use that as a reference. Now, to me, that looks quite good. And when you get this looking pretty good, you can just come in here with some solder and you can just square this in and you can just tack it in so you can make even finer adjustments. So that's exactly what we're going to do. I'll take just a little bit of no clean flux, drop some in there, and I'm just going to come to the corner like this and we're just going to flux a port in. Now we're not securing this in, this isn't a finished joint, this is just going to allow me to very easily lock this in. Now I think, I think that right there looks pretty good. So I'm going to heat this up and I'm not going to spend a lot of time with heat on this. I'm just doing this so that I can get this dialed in. I think that looks quite good. I think that we're pretty darn 
um, square right there. And of course, another reference you can use is this copper pour under the under the HDMI um, or the FFC interconnect. Make sure that you have an even line here that's exposed or revealed, and that all looks quite good. So what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to come in here to another corner, and I'm just going to apply a little more solder, just like this, just to lock this in. I might play with it just a bit here. I still think that looks quite good. Okay, now that looks fantastic. So when we have this in, don't solder everything at once. Start with one connection. That'll give you just a few degrees of rotation here. Then do the second connection. And before you move forward, just make sure that you have a nice, nice even reveal and that this PCB, this interposer, is squared to the as far as your eye is concerned, it's squared to the PCB of the actual Wii. This looks great. Let's finish soldering this in. Excellent work. And with our HDMI interposer in place, we're all finished soldering. Now the only thing that's left in terms of this mod is to install this FFC cable. It's very, very simple. Let's zoom in and you can see how it's done. Now with our contacts facing up, I'm going to go ahead and insert this FFC like so. And I'm going to lock the drawers in by pushing these black tabs in on each side. Perfect. Now I'm going to take the other end of our FFC right here and I'm not going to put a hard fold. All I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a little UE where we gently pass it under here like so and we're just going to make this curve upward and what I want to do is just like before, I want to do this so that the contacts are facing upward and we insert it into this FFC interconnect. Now I'll zoom in so you can see how that's done. Now all I'm going to do is I'm just going to find the most optimal places to put apart. Now I think right about there is pretty darn good. So what I'm going to do is just hold this nice and steady. I'm going to bring this in just a little bit more like so. And I'm going to put a part in the cable about right here. Now this looks good to me. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to push down a little bit with my left index finger. Perfect and we're going to follow this cable all the way down and I'm going to put another part approximately right here. Just press. That's all there is to making these folds and now, let me fix my little conductor here, you have a beautiful fold and your FFC is very cleanly laid out. There's nothing left here for us to do. This is great. Now before we get into reassembly, there's just one thing that I want to talk about here. We have the original red shell, the original RF plating here to the left, and we have an aftermarket a clear ghost case that we're actually going to be installing this in, just because as we noticed before, this is awfully worn out. But please keep in mind, if you're using the original shell and you're keeping this RF plate intact, there's a lot less that you have to do when filing for this HDMI port. This is going to fit in here properly and it's going to look perfectly fine. Because we are removing some thickness by not keeping this RF shield in our aftermarket case, we're going to have to do additional uh, filing to the bottom shell so that the, the lip of the HDMI port will seat properly. Now just keep that in mind. In other words, really simple, if you're going to take this damn shell off and you're going to take this RF plate and omit it, you're going to have to do a little more work, such as cutting, um, for example, you're going to have to cut these nubs here for the USB port. You're going to see me do all of this, but I didn't really talk about it thoroughly, so I just wanted to mention to you, 
um, when you take this damn RF plating out, the, dis the thickness discrepancy, um, you're going to have a gap here, and so we're going to have to uh, accommodate that. So all the steps that I'm doing here to the bottom are because we are not using the RF plate. Okay, let's get back to it. Now we have our case here, and I'm just going to very carefully separate the halves, and I'm going to keep this plastic on here because it's just a protectant, and it's going to keep things from getting sma uh, scratched up and all smashed around. So I'm going to put the other side here, and discard it and we're going to be working with this. Now the kit lives in here just like this but we have a problem. Over here we have a screw boss that is going to not clear and it's going to give us difficulty and as you can see right there you can clearly see where that tab is that this little piece of plastic flashing is keeping us from being able to fully seat this. Now we're going to have to do some small filing here for the port but ultimately we just need to clip this little rib here out. Let's clip it out right now. Now we've clipped that little rib out and as you can see the kit is more easy to fit into place and we're no longer having that clearance issue with the tab for our flex not a big deal but the problem of course now is we have to deal with this HDMI port because it is projecting a little bit off too much here because as you can see our screws and I'll zoom in just a bit that's pretty good our main board is not sitting flat and plain against these screw bosses which means we're just going to have to make a very 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 light filing and sanding on the flashing here in the side edge of this case so that this um, HDMI port will just slightly come down maybe by half a millimeter or a millimeter to the most and this will seat in here beautifully. Okay, let's give it a shot. Now in order to do this with any sort of level of precision, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take a pin and I'm just going to come to the outside edges and I'm just going to scribe a little marking on each side. Fantastic. Now I can still see the separation between the main board and that boss, which means I want to take out just about a millimeter's worth of material here. Not a problem. I have this marked. I can pretty much eyeball that. So what I'm going to do is remove the main board. And we still have, whoops, our markings here. I'm going to take a file, and I'm going to do this off camera because I want to pay very close attention to how much material I remove, but I'm just going to come in here very squarely and I'm just going to reduce this down so that our HDMI port fits in nicely. Give me just a moment and we'll check back in a moment here. Now this looks very, very good. Now I like to use a file as opposed to an X-Acto knife so that I just maintain complete control of the material that I'm removing. Now that looks absolutely perfect. We cut out a great cutaway here for our HDMI port, and of course our standoffs are nicely and firmly making contact with our main board. This is exactly the result we were looking for. So now we're going to take the other half of the case and we're going to make that cut out too. It's the same process. I'll we'll talk about it a little bit. Let's do it. Now once again we're going to make another cutout with our file off camera, but as before, we'll just come in here with our pen and we'll just make some little registry marks right here so I know approximately where these cuts need to start and where they need to end and I'm just going to mark and scribe this over that looks pretty good I'll dial this in as I'm cutting but always make a mark first and then slowly reduce by filing once again exacto knives they're okay but especially with aftermarket shells and older consoles if you have to make a hole a file will mitigate splintering and it will be easier to have control over the reduction of material. Having said that, we've got this marked. I'm going to go off camera, let me get this worked out, and let's see how nice we can make this look. Let's do it. Now as far as I'm concerned, that is a fantastic HDMI port. Now this looks fantastic and wonderful and I don't see anything wrong with this or any reason to remove any more material. It's relatively close and everything is pretty tight. So having said that, this is done. I'll blow all the dust out. 
but in the meantime, let's go ahead and get the mainboard affixed and mounted so we can do some testing before we fully reassemble. Let's go for it. Now before we test this, I'm going to go ahead and affix the heatsink. Make sure you line up the provisions here underneath. Big pad, big provision, small pad, small little provision here, so very simple. Now we're getting ready to test this, and the only thing that we must have connected is the Wi-Fi card right here. The optical drive doesn't have to be connected, so I'm keeping this all connected. I'm just going to come over here and very carefully plug this in. Now I can plug in power, and I'm just going to make sure that digital video works. Let's plug it in and let's see what we get. Okay, great work. Now I was just cleaning this fan out. We've tested this. Our Wii is working perfectly fine. Now it's all about reassembly. So what we're going to do is we're just going to start with that large top RF shielding. And we're going to put that in place and we're going to put this back together. Let's go for it. Now let's start by putting our antenna back into place. That's not a problem. We'll just put it in position and we'll anchor it down. Now when we put our RF plating back into place, make sure that you don't let these cables get cut up because the cutaways here in the metal are quite sharp, so just pay mind to that and be careful. Now remember from before, arrows are silver screws. Whereas X's, these are black screws. Okay, let's zip these screws in and let's get our top RF plating secured in position. Now on the left side with the GameCube controller ports, don't forget this little fixture right here. It fits in place just like this. And it bolts down with two long screws and a short silver screw right in the middle. Let's put this into place. Great work. Now we're going to take three silver screws to put in this little piece right here. And that's going to live in here just like this, but be very careful not to bind or to um, pinch the antenna wire. And this fits in so in there, just like that. Now our final silver screw is going to marry this piece of metal here to the RF plate with this black housing affixed. Let's put this in position. Guys, great work. All we need to do now is put our fan mount in position using our black screws and we'll almost be done. Let's get this in position and let's get it going. Okay guys, just one final piece and we're all done with the reassembly. This black piece of plastic is for the front face. There's one thing we need to do though that I made a mistake on. Remove this screw because it's actually going to anchor down right here in this piece of shielding. Not a big deal, but this is just three black screws. Put it in position, anchor it, and we're all finished with this. Great work. Now, our optical drive needs to be put in position. This is no big deal. Turn it to the left like so. Expose these two interconnects and we're just going to come in here very carefully and we're going to connect these. Now, I like to start with this first because it's just easier. So just rotate this in, firmly place it in position and you're all set. I'll zoom in to show you a little more delicately how to do this without putting too much stress on this connector. Now very carefully with the fingertip, just make sure that this brown drawer here is lifted, which it is now. We'll simply take our flat cable, insert it until it bottoms out, and once it bottoms out, we'll take a finger and press that drawer back down. We're in good shape. Let's put the drive back on top. Now very carefully without putting too much tension on either of these connectors, let's just flip this drive back over and we're going to very carefully put it in position and mount it where it's supposed to go about like that. Now that looks great. We're going to zip four screws in and we'll be all done reassembling the Wii. We'll only need to put the shell back together. That's the top part. Let's go for it. Now here is the original red front face of the Wii that we took apart to do this mod. Now obviously we're installing a clear case, which we're pretty much all the way done through, but 
To give just a little bit of contrast, I'm going to rob some of these really cool red buttons from the original case, and we're going to pop those into our clear front face just so that we have a little contrast here and that everything sort of has like defined lines because the clear buttons are great. Nonetheless, they're hard to see and it's just a nice contrast. So let's rebuild the front face by basically just taking all the parts from the old and popping it in the new. Let's go for it. Now, as far as I'm concerned, this looks amazing. And here we have, you know, the old front face. It's great that we can repurpose old components, old buttons, to give just a little bit of a bling, a little bit of a fling, a little bit of a bang to an aftermarket case. Excellent work. I think this is going to look really great. Okay, let's keep moving on. Now we're going to move our Wii here to the side for just a moment because there's one little piece of prep work that we need to do which isn't a big deal. Now this is our aftermarket top half. We're going to take our original red shell and all we're going to do is we're just going to take this dust filter out right here. I'm going to clean this off camera and we're just going to install it in our new shell. This is very important. Don't forget. Now to install our little intake filter, it's very simple. We're just going to come here to the side of the case. You'll see these two little nubs down here. All we need to do is just line up our little intake filter and just press down firmly. And this will go right in position just like that. Perfect. Now in order to install this metal plate, this is what I like to do. If you look on the sides, you'll see these long tabs that come down with holes. These are perfect because what we're going to do to align this is we're just going to hold our case on its side like so and you'll see these same tabs that go down the Wii on each side. Very, very simple. The only thing that we're going to do here is we're just going to take this and we're going to line it up just like so so that these tabs on the bottom and the tabs on the top kind of marry and then our circles here, our cutouts in each will perfectly align. Now that all looks fantastic on this side. Let's turn it around because we're going to have to finagle this side a little bit too. Not a big deal. Let's just come in here very carefully. You may have to move some things and manipulate things just a little bit here, but ultimately it's just a matter of sort of pressing this down and seating it in place and making sure that you've got good, perfect alignment, which we do. This looks great. This looks great. Let's go back to the other side. Great alignment here and great alignment right here. Okay, this is all done. We can now set the top half shell onto this base. Let's go for it. Excellent. Okay, let's bolt this in and we'll worry about putting the front plate on in our very last step. Let's get it going. Now before we put our front face on, I'm going to put that to the side because I want to take our GameCube bezel and I want to put this in position and anchor this down with all screws with the exception of putting this one in. I'm not going to put this screw in because the bezel, if you'll notice here, this tab, it slides right underneath and this bezel bites into this. So if I install this now, it's not going to do any good mechanically. So keep this screw out. Let's put this in and let's install this bezel. Let's go for it. Let's go ahead and let's connect this power LED wire, which is what this is. We'll connect this and we're going to put this in position. And this is anchored down by two screws and the tabs on each side. Let's get it going. Well, that's all done. This Wii looks absolutely fantastic. I couldn't be more happier with this shell. The red buttons really pop against this clear casing. And the Wii HDMI mod, what more can you say about it? It outputs lossless digital video and audio, and it's cheap, really cheap. It's just a pain to install if you don't have the experience. And if you don't, I wanna make this recommendation. Find a modder out there, find somebody who can do it. But make sure that you know that they know what they're doing. And the best way to do that is not through Twitter posts, and it's not through pictures that they post of their completed works. 
ask them to send video documenting their processes and their procedure. Video is the greatest equalizer. Anyone can bullshit a picture and anyone can bullshit a Twitter post. Nobody can really bullshit a video that's uncut or unedited and you can clearly see who has skills and who doesn't have skills. So before you hand over a significant amount of money, ask for video of them going through their installation procedure. It's just a personal recommendation from me. Somebody has, doing this, has been doing this probably long before any of these other people ever knew about it. Having said that, if you want to buy a kit, I have an affiliate link down below in the video description. Now, you don't have to use it, but if you do, I greatly appreciate it. These videos take literally hundreds of hours to produce, to shoot, cut, edit, pre-process, post-process. It's a lot. Even this outro is a lot. Now, all of the soldering equipment that I use, from the soldering irons to the flux to the solder, links are down below. All the stuff that I use, you can buy. Just follow the links in the video description. I've made it all available, so you can simply navigate, grab it, and use it. Now, I'm going to leave you with what I think is the first ever true video footage of the RetroTink 4K being used. We're going to pair the HDMI output of the Wii to the RetroTink 4K so you can see what it does digitally with lossless video content. This is 480p coming out that's going to be upsampled. Now, this is 4K output. We're going to downsample this to 1080p because that's what this video is, but that's quite okay. For the purposes of comparison, that's quite all right in this case. We're also going to be comparing the component output of a stock Wii to the video digital output of this modified Wii, just so that you can see the difference between the analog output and the digital output, because a lot of systems, the N64, the PlayStation 1, as far as I'm concerned, the digital mods have diminishing returns and they cost a lot of money for very little. That's just my opinion. The Wii is a system that leverages the digital output beautifully and it makes a truly significant difference in fidelity. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. Take care of yourselves. Let me know. Like, subscribe, do all that stupid YouTube stuff. Let me know if you liked it. I'll check you later. Have a good time. I'm going to make more videos. And I'll catch you guys real soon. And as always, strap on and say hi to your mother for me. Take care.